Hello, mudlarking friends, and welcome to 10 Minute Treasures with Old Father Thames. During the COVID-19 lockdown, I'm sharing 10 minute videos with you, looking at some of my favourite finds refound. A quick explanation for my new viewers. I'm a modern day mudlark, which means I search the tidal River Thames foreshore in London, England, to find historical items which lay preserved in the anaerobic mud. From prehistoric via medieval to modern, the river contains a rich history of life's remnants from London and beyond, and I like to share that with you guys. Usually you'd see me down on the foreshore, where I take you on a history hunt. However, as we're currently on lockdown, mudlarking is totally off limits. So for now, I am showing you my previous foreshore finds and their history from the comfort of my own home. Fear not, I will still be sharing lots of footage of the tidal River Thames shot on previous adventures. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this little slice of history from me to you. Today we're going to look at a treasured find from 2017. An 18th to 19th century copper alloy cufflink or cuff button depicting Maria Theresa, Holy Roman Empress. It may only be a tiny find, measuring barely 14 millimetres in diameter and weighing a puny 1.5 grams, but we are dealing with a whole lot of female powerhouse here. Before going deep on my research into Maria Theresa, I wanted to share that previously, lamentably, I mostly referred to this Holy Roman Empress as Marie Antoinette's mother. In this 10 minute video, I hope to readdress the injustice of referring to her as simply the mother of a famous French queen and give you just a few examples of how and why this last and only female ruler of the Habsburg Dominion was a huge force to be reckoned with. As with my last video, I'm not going to attempt an entire potted history on such an enormous subject. We will once again concentrate on particulars. During her reign, Maria Theresa did good, no doubt, and she also did bad. But, whether doing good or bad, she did it all with conviction. In this video, we will look at the light and the dark side of Maria Theresa, Holy Roman Empress. Before we get into the hows and whys, let's take a look at the find itself, which was identified by the Finds Liaison Officer at the Museum of London. What you're looking at now is an incomplete post-medieval lead alloy portrait cufflink or cuff button. It dates from 1700 to 1800 AD. It's circular in shape and depicts a left-facing female bust of Maria Theresa, Holy Roman Empress. Below the bust are the inscribed initials M-T-R-R-E-R-B. Around the bust you can see a delicate beaded rim. The rear is undecorated and, sadly, the looped shank is broken and missing. What I truly love about this cufflink is the exquisite detail on the relief. We can clearly see Maria Theresa's facial features, her headdress and elaborate updo with her hair tumbling around her neck and curling down around her shoulders. It's stunning. Maria Theresa Valbagia Amalia Cristina Born 13th of May, 1717, died 29th of November, 1780, was the only female ruler of the Habsburg dominions and the last of the House of Habsburg. In her own right, she was the sovereign of many countries, including Austria, Hungary and Bohemia, and by marriage to Francis, Duke of Lorraine, she also became Duchess of Lorraine. Most importantly, she was Holy Roman Empress, and that was by her father's doing. The eldest daughter of Emperor Charles VI, Maria Theresa started her 40-year reign when her father died in October 1740. You see, Charles VI was the only surviving male of the House of Habsburg and hoped for a son who would prevent the extinction of this dynasty. But that son and heir never came, so, despite his apparently lifelong disappointment, he spent the rest of his reign securing Maria Theresa's accession. He did this by creating the Pragmatic Sanction of 1713, an edict which allowed the Habsburg 
transfer hereditary possessions to be inherited by a daughter. This edict allowed the displacement of the heir presumptive, his niece, and made sure that Maria Theresa became ruler. Despite that lifelong mission to stick her on the throne, Maria Theresa was never actually crowned empress. Technically, she was empress consort, the de facto ruler of the nation, and Maria Theresa began styling herself Holy Roman Empress in 1745. Maria Theresa was an absolute ruler who believed she always made right and just decisions, those advantageous for the nations she governed, rather than guiding her nations by her own personal beliefs. She was a ruler during the Age of Enlightenment, and that greatly steered her direction. But it has been said that Maria Theresa was a reformer against her will. Of greater import to her was the practical applicability of Enlightenment ideas, rather than the philosophy of Enlightenment. The idealistic basis of this philosophical current always remained at odds to her private, personal beliefs. Nevertheless, Maria Theresa made new laws that led to architectural and social growth, and paved the way for compulsory education in the 18th century. Writing on the excellent Habsburger online resource, Habsburger.net, Martin Muchlechner states that Maria Theresa was the most important ruler of the age of enlightened absolutism. Though opposed to religious toleration and all efforts to reform the Habsburg Empire from the grassroots, Maria Theresa carried out lasting reforms, introducing income and poll tax and establishing elementary schools, breaking the Jesuit monopoly on education education and removing universities from church control. It must be said, however, that Maria Theresa did not design to liberate her people from ecclesiastical or feudal tutelage because of the church control. It was rather intended to bring about the greatest possible benefit for the state and the dynasty. Again, duty over personal private belief. These changes were widely celebrated and, as well as deftly steering her nation through the backstabbing war of Austrian succession and the Seven Years' War, is one of the main reasons for commemorating Maria Theresa as a strong and benevolent ruler. However, as night follows day, with the light must come the dark. While the Enlightenment proposed religious tolerance between different denominations, it also took a while to accept and put into practice. Maria Theresa still considered tolerance of other denominations to be highly dangerous and had secret Protestants pursued. In some regards, the conservative Catholic ruler applied a strict zero-tolerance policy. Put simply, she had no sympathy for non-Catholics. Under her rule, Protestants were even expelled to be resettled in thinly populated regions of what is now Romania. And it gets worse. Possibly the lowest point of Maria Theresa's continued religious intolerance came when the largest Jewish community of that time was expelled from Prague in 1744. This dissolution meant that 20,000 individuals were forced to leave the city within a very short space of time to relocate. Another dubious aspect of her reign was the creation of her Constitutio Criminalis Theresiana, a handbook of criminal practice that was binding across the entire monarchy, which further underscores Maria Theresa's fundamentally conservative attitude. This unified legal framework, which did nothing to modernise legal practice, cemented the approval of continued use of torture as legal means of interrogation. This was met with deep criticism from Enlightenment representatives, but remained in place until 1776, when torture was finally abolished. During Maria Theresa's entire life, this devout pre-Enlightenment Catholic showed no tolerance at all towards immorality, in particular sexual immorality. She even went as far as introducing a chastity court, which sought to prosecute prostitutes, adulterers, homosexuals, and even members of different religions engaging in sex sexual intercourse. Depending on the crime, the sentence could include whipping, deportation or even the death penalty. This aversion to sexual freedom did not mean Maria Theresa was a cold, dispassionate prude. Oh no, in her world, passionate love certainly existed, but it must be love in the right way, according to her religion. Maria Theresa was one of the few people of her age who married for love, and she certainly had no issue with creating issue. She had 16 children by Francis I, 11 daughters and 5 sons. Her youngest daughter was Maria Antonia, better known under her French name, Marie Antoinette. Maria Theresa lived a charmed life surrounded by riches and as a popular, formidable ruler. 
her most treasured home was the official estate of Austrian ruler's Schönbrunn Palace. It was a wedding gift from her late father and features a spectacular Rococo hall known as the Great Gallery. Making it the centre of courtly representation, this splendid palace received visits from most of the crowned heads of Europe. The Great Gallery features tall windows, crystal mirrors and white and gold stucco wall decoration. The ceiling frescoes combine to form a total work of art in its own right, resulting in one of the most magnificent Rococo ceremonial halls in existence. The central panel ceiling frescoes by the Italian artist Gregorio Giuliani shows the prospering monarchy under the reign of Maria Theresa. Enthroned at its centre are Maria Theresa and Francis I, surrounded by personifications of monarchical virtues. Ranged around this central group are allegories of the Habsburg crown lands, each with its riches and resources. Today, Schönbrunn Palace is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of Austria's biggest tourist attractions. Despite her great fortune, charmed living and celebrated rule, in later life Maria Theresa was left bereft at the death of her beloved husband Francis. Her final purpose in life was the preservation of his memory. She wore widow's weeds, cutting her hair severely short and wearing a widow's veil. Maria Theresa enveloped herself in the Catholic Church's virtues for widows, which meant the rejection of all worldly pleasures and courtly amusements, which were not deemed becoming for a grieving widow. Keeping a strong hold on the reins of power from the shadows, she ultimately withdrew from public life and, uniquely to the history of the Habsburg rule, made her son co-regent of the Habsburg monarchy. Still, she remained the stronger force of the two until her death. After her death, a scrap of paper was found in her prayer book. Written on it was calculated the precise duration of her marriage. 29 years, 6 months, 6 days, that makes 29 years, 335 months, 1540 weeks, 10,781 days, 258,744 hours. I hope you enjoyed the third episode in my 10 Minute Treasures series. It's a lockdown special edition and I hope to be back on the foreshore soon. But until then, I'll keep doing these little history bites on some of my finds refound. Thanks as ever for subscribing and watching and I'll share another 10 Minute Treasures with you again very soon. Take care everyone.